to the Prophecy Club. We're going to continue listening to the audio of the DVD by Maurice Scalar called Revelations for the Midnight Hour. Now, this Maurice Scalar is more than just a little awesome. He was a child prodigy with the violin. 1985, God began to speak to him in visions. And on this DVD, he shares 10 of those visions that have to do with America's fall and the end times. This guy was a former professor of music at Oral Roberts University, second chair violin with the Tulsa Philharmonic. He has a most interesting healing and music ministry and occasionally speaks prophetically. He says that God has told him that the dollar will lose another 30% more until it totally dies. All U.S. wealth, he says, will be lost overnight. Many in the church will be awakened and returned to Christ. There will be massive riots across the U.S. Many nations will attack Israel. Nukes will be used. Israel will win World War III, get back all of our land. Masses will move to Israel. Revival will come to the United States after a lot of trouble. There will be cities of refuge. The Internet will grow evil and oppressive and much much more. Now, this DVD is normally valued at $30, and you can get it through Prophecy Club for that, but right now we're putting our October Prophecy Conference DVD set on an unbelievable gift offer. Here's the deal. You get six speakers making 11 DVDs valued at $330, all for a gift of just $90. That's right. That's about $8 per DVD. If you want to get just one of these single DVDs up until the offer expires, you can get it for a gift of $15 plus shipping. Now, here's a list of 11 DVDs, which I will read through rather quickly. Shane Warren, The Storm, Judgment, and Revival. Bill Federer, Change to Chains, Islamic Conquest, Past and Present. 32 Miracles in American History, Origins of the Great Awakening. Bree Keaton, Go Save the Pygmies, Translations to Heaven. Maurice Scalar, which we're about to hear, Revelations of the Midnight Hour, Daniel Davis, I Saw the Dollar Dead, Michael Boldea, Nine Dreams and Visions, The Suffering or the Glory. Order the October Prophecy Conference at prophecyclub.com or call 785-266-1112. Offer expires May 9th. Offer expires May 9th. Prophecyclub.com or 785-266-1112, October Prophecy Conference. Now let's go listen to Maurice Scalar in Revelations for the Midnight Hour. Um, I was caught up to heaven, and I saw angels preparing an outdoor banquet dinner. And everything was white, 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 pure and perfect and pristine, like the most perfect wedding you've ever seen. There were perfect t- table settings. There was a long, large banquet. There were long, large banquet tables being prepared under lar- a large tent pavilion. And I saw the angels just busy, 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 going to and fro. And there was such joy. They were all anticipating the arrival of the saints of God. And, and then I saw, I got to look closely at the, I got to look closely at the, uh, the, the settings of the table, and they were beautiful gold, and, and like uh, just these plates were just awesome with mother of pearl. It looked just so beautiful. And there, there were names of the saints on gold name plates at each setting. Some had jewels around their names. Some were obviously of a higher station. They were more honored than others. But everyone was honored to be there, you know. Some tables were set closer to the center table, which had Yeshua's throne chair in the center. There were uh, biblical people sitting, sitting beside him. The nameplates were there. I got to see some of that. Then the Lord said to me, Tell my bride that I am coming soon. Everything is being prepared. And a little while, all sorrow, pain, sickness, poverty, and every teardrop will be wiped away. There is only a little longer that you must labor. You must work now while it is still time, for the darkness is soon coming upon the earth when all will be in tribulation. Stay ready and remain alert and watching and praying. I will surely come for you just as I promised in my word. You know, I think the Bible is uh, that God on purpose did not make it too clear. It's cryptic. We don't know for sure. Everyone has very good... I used to think I knew. I don't think so anymore. I know very little. But I do know 
that light wins over darkness. And we have to, we have to keep hold of that hope, you know? Amen? Amen. All right. Well, we have a little bit more time than from this first section here. So I'm going to uh, uh, give you another vision. This happened in 2009. I was in Hong Kong. Uh, and I was not, I was grumpy. I didn't want to have a vision. <laughs> I was trying to go to the McDonald's, and this thing happened for two hours. And, but nevertheless, I had to, I had to admit it really was a, I mean, I fought this one, but it still came. And it was very strong. And it, and it, it for days, it, it shook me, actually. This shook me. This was... I call it the vision of the closing of the gates of grace. Again, I saw the earth in space, like I spoke to you. And above it, I saw two massive golden gates that were open like this. Just, just massive gates. They were, they were as big as, 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 I mean, they were looked bigger than the earth. And two huge angels on each side. One on each side, I should say. With, and they had these swords, and then they were... They were spinning around and they were on fire. And I thought of the angels in the Garden of Eden. These were guardian, they were guarding this gate, obviously. But there was this amazing spinning sword. Like, it was just, and, and it was, they were glowing like the sun. I mean, everything was just bright, bright, bright. And, and what I saw was I saw a river of light pouring down onto the earth from these gates. And heaven was above it. And then I looked up. Above this, and I saw Yeshua, I saw Jesus on a throne. But he, he was, didn't have a smile on his face. It almost looked like one of those, um, uh, one of those Middle Ages type of, you know, he was very stoic, you know, and he looked fierce. I mean, and he had, he had you know how it says many crowns? I saw many crowns on his head over him, and they were suspended, and they just went up many crowns. He would crown him with many crowns. And there were, I mean, it was obvious this is the king of all kings. And I shook when I saw him. I mean, this was not, you know, Jesus tiptoeing through the tulips and, you know. No, this was the great king of glory. Whew. And he had looked, and he had what looked like an iron scepter or pole in his right hand. It wasn't fancy. It looked like a weapon. It looked like you know, just like it says in Psalm 2, he, he'll smash the, with a rod of iron. That's, it, is iron. it was like, it was metal. It was like this dark metal. And, and in the other hand, he had an old-fashioned looking harvest sickle. You know, those things that, how they used to do it by hand, you know? And he had that in his left hand. Suddenly, I heard his voice. It sounded like a roaring ocean of water and wind as he spoke. It was the most terrifying thing. I understand now, I understand why uh, at Mount Sinai they said, please, please, don't let him speak to us anymore. It's like a trumpet blast, loud and loud. But no, it's, he, his voice is the, like the sound of many waters. By the way, I can tell if somebody's really been to heaven. You know, you don't go into the throne room, I mean, to, into God's presence. You don't go into the throne room, hey, God, how are you? I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. No, the first thing that will happen is you fall flat on your face. He is the king of glory. He is high and lifted up. You, your knees will fellowship one with another. They'll knock. I'm telling you, you will fall on your face because I no, not, not, he is so glorious. I have never heard the sound of a voice like that before. It shook me. It branded on my inside. He said, The time has come to close the gates of grace upon the earth. The nations have rejected me and my father long enough. Lift the coverings of protection off of those nations that have chosen Babylon over my kingdom. I will no longer protect them from reaping what they have sown. And then I saw the angels begin to shut the doors, but they closed very slowly. They closed so slowly. And even years passed as the doors closed. Seasons went by. I saw that river of light pouring upon the earth. And then, and as I looked closer, I saw that angels were flying or, or ascending and descending back and forth. They brought prayers uh, 
from the earth to heaven. Then they descended with the answers back to the earth. And, and I realized that is the operation of grace. Right before the gates closed, I heard the Lord say, Come up here, my bride, and escape the wrath that is about to be poured out upon the earth. A deafening loud blast of trumpets came then. It was so loud, and it came louder, 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 louder. And the two angels blew together these long silver trumpets. And before these gates closed completely, multitudes, millions of souls ascended out of the earth very fast in a flash of light. Yeshua was suspended in the outer atmosphere, and these souls met him in the air, then rapidly went up through the closing doors in a river of light and glory. The earth was left in darkness, and I saw that electronic web again and heard the screams of those lost in the darkness. The Lord spoke again, warned them, Time is very short. You must preach the gospel and work while it is still daylight. The night comes very soon and no man can then harvest in the time of grace ever again. The doors of grace are beginning to close. Repent, 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 O earth, before the river of light stops flowing. Then you will face me, not as merciful Savior, but as the judge of all the earth. Who will hear and heed the final call of the silver trumpet's clarion of grace, grace? Take heed to the warning, O earth. Receive the word of the Lord. Amen. The Lord continued to say, My spirit will not strive with sinful man forever. Come to me now while there is still a little time. A little time left. I am coming soon for my overcoming bride. Keep your lamps burning. Watch and pray. I am at the doors of grace. They are closing quickly. Come into my ark of safety. Come into the bridal chamber and the doors will be shut. I am coming for you my beloved. So this is uh, the conclusion of what the Lord said uh, to me at the end of that vision of the closing of the gates of grace. I'd like to uh, speak with you also of a recent word that uh, I was given. And this is more in a teaching form, not in a vision, but uh, there are three wars coming against Israel. Some people believe there's, there's, uh, there's only two, but really, if you study closely, you'll see that there are three wars. The, one, the first one is upon us, in fact, has been held back uh, uh, by, I, I think it could have come even sooner, but I don't know, it could come at any moment. And I, um, I, I have referred to it as the Psalm 83. Obadiah war. There's others that have researched this out more than I, but, and you've probably heard of this before, some of you. But <clears throat> the nations directly surrounding Israel will be wiped out, including Syria, Lebanon, parts of Jordan and Egypt. There's a prophecy in Isaiah concerning the destruction of Damascus. Uh, it says that it will be destroyed and it will be never, never be rebuilt again. I believe it's Isaiah 17. I, I have to check to be sure, but uh, it will become a ruinous heap. Now, that has never happened in all of history. Damascus is one of the oldest uh, continually inhabited cities in the world. Uh, I think it's three or 4,000 4, years or something. But that prophecy will be fulfilled, I believe, in this coming war. We... we Actually, I was just in Israel, and uh, there's a covert war has already begun. There's, there's a lot going on, special forces, hidden things, to, to stop Iran, uh, or, or at least delay them as long as possible. And uh, we see that, of course, in the news. But uh, interestingly enough, Iran is not mentioned in this uh, Psalm 83 uh, confederation of nations. You'll have to study that or look at that yourself. I don't have time to go into detail. But uh, it, it, will be, it will leave a ring of fire around Israel uh, on all sides of the neighboring nations. Now, uh, how the, the timing, exactly how it happens, we have to be careful. 
with sequence of events because, again, I used to think I knew a lot. Now I know I don't know very much. But So where the Bible is silent, we have to say we don't know for sure. But these nations include the, the Palestinian. This is the judgment of Esau, the house of Esau or Edom, the Edomites. Obadiah talks about the judgment of Esau, the judgment of Edom. And also in that is a, a scripture that says, as you have done to Israel, so shall it be done to you. And you have to understand that when, when nations come against, including America, come against Israel, and uh, uh, you're not, that, that is not new covenant. That's old covenant. That's eye for an eye, two, three. In other words, God says, as you've done, so shall it be done. You are now, that's the Abrahamic covenant. That's the, that's the, the, the law realm. And so that's why judgment is so quick and so, I mean, we, and there's been great, uh, uh, great teachers that have chronicled, I'm sure you've heard about the relationship of how we've treated Israel since 1991 and that the judgments that have come on America, uh, uh, that uh, there's over 70 of them that are within 24, 48 hours. Uh, including Katrina and Gaza and other Hurricane Katrina and other others, and this is, uh, I believe that God will judge the Holy God of Israel will judge uh, the the House of Esau, the Islam. This is a judgment against fanatic Islam, which will spill over into Iran, of course. But uh, the second of these three wars is what we could call the the Ezekiel 38-39 war. Much more has been taught on this in our time, and we're more familiar with it. Uh, this, this is a retaliation uh, led by Russia from, from this first war. Uh, it's an invasion from the north. And there's other Arab nations included in this. If you study it, it's not the same nations as Psalm 83. It's... Uh, it includes Iran, Iraq, many others from the coalition of nations. Armies, these armies will be completely wiped out. Most likely, this is a supernatural destruction by direct intervention from God. The Psalm 83 war, I think, is a limited nuclear war because it will, it says that, that again, fire, um, and it will be judgment by fire. As you have done, as you have said, so shall it be done to you. That's why it's so dangerous for leaders like uh, the the Ahmadinejad in Iran to the, that fellow to get up there and say, you know, we're going to wipe Israel off the face of the map. It's like he's prophesying his own doom. Amen. That's exactly what's going to happen to him. So you know, it you have to understand God is using Israel in the last days and the Jewish people as his anvil. Of judgment. The city of Jerusalem will more and more become the focal point, the center of the world, more and more, because it is the center of the world. And uh, all of the nations will come against her to destroy her, to divide her. And it says in Zechariah, I believe, chapter 12, that, that the nations, that, it, that, that the city of Jerusalem is this immovable stone that God has set there. And the nations will just tear themselves apart or they will be they 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 will they will be destroyed as they try to move this heavy immovable stone it's uh, uh and and you see it's always been the same it's really a spiritual attack it's not it, it's not a political situation the solution in the middle east is not cannot be it cannot be solved by political means or by negotiation or by, certainly not by appeasement. Why? Because it, it's a satanic hatred to, to come against the covenant God of Israel, the Holy One of Israel. He, he will stand up and fight God himself. The angel Mike, archangel Michael will stand up and fight and destroy those who come against Israel. So this second war is this 
big coalition that looks like it's so, so invincible that it's impossible for little Israel. But nevertheless, God himself destroys and wipes them out, which will cause uh, a tremendous aliyah from the Jews. Now, I want to talk to you about why God has to shake America and the West. The Jewish people have returned from the North. The Jewish people have returned from the South, Ethiopia and, and, and South Africa. They've returned, uh, they've returned from the East, but they have not returned from the West. The majority of the Jewish people are right here in America. God will shake America and bring his people home, just like he collapsed the, the uh, Iron Curtain and brought his people home in direct fulfillment of Jeremiah chapter 16. So shall he do here in the West. All Israel shall return in the time of famine or the time of Jacob's trouble or the tribulation. Or, during that time, they will go they will return because Israel will be supernaturally protected and supernaturally provided for. However, in these wars, these two wars, it says that Israel will become lean. In other words, it will be attacked and it will be hurt and there will be damage done. However, the nation will not be destroyed and the city of Jerusalem shall not, uh, uh, shall not fall in, into the hands of the enemy. Now, there will be peace and things like that, peace agreements and appeasements and all kinds of things, but nevertheless, the will of the Lord, that shall stand, right? Okay. Finally, then the third war is, we could call it the Armageddon War or the final war. Every single nation will come and attack Israel. That shows you that that's a demonic attack against the covenant. Why is Israel attacked? Because Satan knows that if he can destroy Israel and take Jerusalem, then the throne of David cannot be inhabited and Yeshua cannot return. That's, a, that's always been the plan of God to wipe out Israel. Nevertheless, God's will shall be done. And what I love the most about God is he always wins. It'll, it'll turn out just like it says in the word of God. Yeah. And he's predicted it from the beginning, and he knows. So we can be comforted and assured in that. Okay. Now, I want to make a few statements. America, I've said it once before, America does not appear in any significant way in Bible prophecy. Now, there have been those that have said and applied certain passages, and perhaps young lions uh, the uh, of Britain, the 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 uh, the the prophecies concerning Egypt that could apply maybe but in in Isaiah but really you have to really really look and still it's very vague so somehow America will cease from being a world power in the near future the balance of power will shift to Europe and the Middle East and Asia that's what the weight of Bible prophecy uh, uh, states, if you want to take it literally. Now, some people take Bible prophecy and allegorize, and you know what? That gets very confusing to me. What I mean by allegorize is, well, this really means this, and this is a symbol, and it really means that. But the Bible interprets itself, and if you want to take the most literal, interpret, in other words, a servant, God means what he says. When it's a symbol, the Bible says it's a symbol. Uh, it's like this. Then we know it's a symbol. But if he says it is this, then it is that. And so then if you want to take that, then we, we, we have to acknowledge that there's a shift of power in the West to Europe, Middle East, and Asia. How has the mighty USA fault, failed? There will be... Oh, how has the mighty fallen? That's what the Lord said to me. There's a lament. There's a grieving in heaven because we have a covenant with God. I believe that the purposes of the United States will be fulfilled. The calling of the United States is two things. Two things primarily. To stand with Israel in the last days and to be 
the light city on the hill to bring the gospel to the nations and to also provide for, be a breadbasket, be what Britain was a hundred years ago in Victoria's time, be, be the provider for the world, show God's grace. Well, I believe that America will stand and fulfill her destiny somehow. But when I'm telling you though, God, God is not happy <laughs> with, because we've been given so much we're accountable for so much. We have so much light, so much. We, we have to give account for what we've been given as a nation. Okay. So how the mighty USA has fallen. And I heard the Lord say this. This was yesterday I wrote this. There will be eternal lamentations in heaven sung about America's fall, the destruction. How have the mighty fallen? Now, I want to uh, give you a, another word, a vision that the Lord gave me. This was in 2005, but it's really a message. It came to me later when I went to Indonesia in 2006. I preached this in Surabaya and uh, in a very large church of 25,000. We had five services, but it is, it is, it's a message about the church of our day of our time. And so I call it the preparation of the bride. Now, the, there's a church in the book of Revelation that Yeshua f refers, he, he, he speaks of the last of the seven churches, is called the church, the Laodicean church. And prophetically, that church and I'm going to have to interrupt Maury Scalar right there, but I do want to encourage you to get this DVD set. It's called the October Prophecy Conference, and you get 11 DVDs by six different speakers valued at $330, all for a gift of just $90. It's called the October Prophecy Conference. You get it at prophecyclub.com or 785-266-1112. At the Prophecy Club, we don't put a lot of text on our website, unlike other websites where you can go and read and read and read. Our information is found in the DVDs. The radio is to get people to get the DVDs. The website is to get people to get the DVDs. So if you want the information of the Prophecy Club, you have to get the DVDs. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your prayers. And thank you for your gifts of support. God bless. Now from the Prophecy Club, some exciting opportunities for you. You must... I said, you must get these two DVDs. Outside of the birth of Christ, I think this is the most important information since the flood. Prophet Ephraim Rodriguez was shown in a vision that a large meteor will hit near Puerto Rico and cause a thousand foot tsunami there, but it'll be 200 to 400 feet high and go a hundred miles inland on the east coast of America. It will also split America from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico and large chunks of California will fall into the ocean, killing millions of Americans. In a second DVD, I put the whole picture together, quoting six other people that also saw a large meteor hit Puerto Rico, four for the tsunami hitting the east coast of the United States, six the split of America in two pieces, three large chunks of California falling into the ocean, three also saw the reason for this is because America forces Israel to split her land. Get both DVDs valued at $60 for a gift of $30. It's good for the ministry, but you have to have this information. Call 785-266-1112 or go to prophecyclub.com. Get the Meteor offer today. Get it today.